Oh, Jesus. Get, get my booty adjusted. Welcome. Welcome, welcome to episode 119 of the Off and Beat podcast. I'm your host, Clint Nelson. Uh, before we start today's episode, you guys know the drill. Kind of like, comment. I um, Please like, comment, subscribe, follow the podcast on all apps, put on the notification bell, whatever app you're using, and most importantly, suck some titties. Uh, recording this at 8.48 p.m., February 28th. This will probably be out Thursday. Uh, but yeah, uh, today's episode, um, as you probably read in the title, I kind of have two different titles I'm going with, but we're going to go with Limp Simp of Intimacy. Yes. And why is uh, that? Why did I choose that to be the title today? One, very catchy, Limp simp of intimacy and what do men simp about most um i hate the term alpha simp and not that exists but i feel like it's just overused it's just used to simplify people because people don't actually understand what actually makes someone those characteristics but isn't funny how the most Quote alpha people become limp simps for very star driven uh, athletes, let's just say. And there's this quote that caught my eye, right? It's an old quote. Of course, it's from the great, consider the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. The quote is I never lost. I never lost. What does that sound like? I never lost. Never lost. I never lost. I just ran out of time. Um, well, by default, it's not true. That's not how sports works. That's not how game clock, that's not how play clocks work. You didn't go 82 and 0 every season, even in the greatest season. Uh, Before the Warriors broke the greatest regular season where you went 72 and 10, you still lost 10 games in the regular season. So you did lose. Um, And you, and I say only, meaning there were out of your 13 NBA seasons, only six of them did you win a championship. 13 with the Bulls, I should specify. Uh, so, you you ran out of time a lot, and you lost those games. But what caught my eye is like, okay, fine. I, but I understand the kind of quote, unquote, deeper meaning is like you never quit, you never lose. The only reason why he would have continued playing until he won the game because that's how relentless and pursuit is kind of like the Kobe Mama mentality. All this stuff, like, yeah, look, all right. Like, I get the deeper message. I understand that's not always literal. But the problem is, is fanboy limp simps of any type of quote-unquote quote from any guy that's review, that's revered amo- amongst men and the role models and shit. Anything they say, we just gobble their dicks like it's fucking, you know, Thanksgiving. And boy, thanks for uh, giving the ammunition for this one. It's anything these it's anything these guys say, fanboys, fans, this romanticizing that we've done with these people. And Michael Jordan is one of the greatest examples of that. Of how no matter what he says, anything he says, people will try to be like, that's why he's the GOAT. That's why this, that's why that. It's like, well, technically, it's a misinformation, but whatever. Uh, I guess misinformation only applies to certain things. (laughs) Obviously, less severe. But this this thing where men, you know, even these quote-unquote alpha dudes become such simps to just be, to just buy and eat anything that this dude throws out as a bone i never lost 
only ran out of time. All right, cool. What if LeBron James said that? What if Kevin Durant, what if, insert any NBA player now, were to say that? They would be getting grilled. Be like, oh, LeBron lost six finals. He's only won three in his seven. It's like, it's like, okay. But technically, those rules, the basketball NBA rules, obviously they've changed over time. But in terms of time, play clock, the rules that are pretty standard amongst NBA, it's the same for LeBron. It's the same for Michael Jordan. They weren't playing really by different quote unquote technical rules, except for some, you know, in game stuff. But in terms of the play clock, the the shot clock, the game clock, minutes and a quarter, overtime. It's all relatively been the fucking same. But if LeBron says that, it's a whole oh the Queen James, LeBron ain't this, this is why he's not Michael. Always making excuses. Because you know what it really sounds like? It sounds like excuses for not winning. (coughs) But of course, fanboys, limp simps, will eat that shit up. Because that's what they want to hear. It's just another built-in excuse. Which, honestly, if you look into the deeper dive, and it's covered in a fucking 10-hour fucking documentary through ESPN, essentially. Like, this dude just... You know, and hey, do what you got to do to get the job done. I'm not shitting on him. I I love the documentary. I think it shows inside that sometimes you have to be a little fucked up to accomplish these obscene and consistency in anything. That's what I'm trying to take to this podcasting world. I'm the Michael Jordan of podcasting. Because you know what? I never suck. My camera just dies and runs out of battery. So, you know, that's how it goes. Imagine, and these same dudes that, and honestly, before I continue on that, when you look in the com, when I was looking in the comment section, because I saw it, it was like a YouTube type of video, type of memo advertisement thing in the thing. I clicked the comments of the quote, and it's just all these dudes like, oh my God, Michael Jordan was so amazing, and all this shit. But then, if you remember the documentary, it's like, oh, this dude made up shit. This dude lied. Uh, he, he basically lied to, about the one dude saying, oh, this dude once said to me that I wasn't there. And I was like, oh, I'm going to remember that. And dude's like, I never fucking said that. I wanted your autograph. I was like, oh my God, no, I'm going against Michael Jordan. And that dude, of course, stored it. And then he dropped like 48 points on the dude. And the dude was like, never the same after that. And hey, do what you got to do to get the job done. And lying about what someone said in basketball, it's not that big of a deal. But let's also not pretend like that stuff probably festers into a lot of other things in his life that you can put two and two together if you look into his personal life. And I'm not really going to, I don't think his personal life is actually really that controversial, really. It's pretty standard considering his life. But, like, yeah, this dude has a history of not being... uh, the most straight up of honest type of dudes in a lot of ways. But that's not the point here I'm trying to make. <laughs> he is the figure he is and deservingly so. The problem is that sometimes when people are so bigger than life figures. Because of such stark accomplishments they have. And specificity to specific things. Where you know obviously look his brand was bigger than anything. He basically made Nike what it is today. Like, he he deserves everything he has. And, you know, whatever. But, let's not make it where everything this dude says is like he's some Aristotle type of philosophy. It, It shouldn't be this running Facebook meme page of quotes of deep... Life quotes, it's like, oh, you know, it's not that he wasn't ready. It's just that he didn't know if you were. It's that very like, how did this, how did this become about me? And this dude is blaming NBA rules, basketball rules that apply to every single 
regulated basketball game. At the very least, even if shot clocks are very different in certain countries, like 30 seconds, college is 30 seconds, shit like that. There's time in a quarter. You know how much time's in the quarter. You know how much time you have in four quarters. You have a half time. If you don't get it done within that time frame, and you have less points than the other team, you lose the game. But somehow Michael Jordan's like, I think for me it should have been different. They should have just kept letting me play until I won. Which honestly, imagine if your kid said that. I'm going to play until I win. It's like, but the game's over. The rules say you lost. You're out of money. It's Monopoly. You run out of money. You're out of money. It's like, no, we're playing till I win. We're kind of rewarding at that time. I think he said like 35, 40, 45, 50 now. He's still saying these type of quotes. Imagine, just translate those quotes and imagine your seven-year-old child saying that. You'd be like, that's not how life works. Unless you're Michael Jordan, I guess. But just translate what grown a grown man is saying and translate that to a child. You would be like, this kid needs parenting. <laughs> this kid, uh, that, that's not how this works. Now, look, you, what you can take is relentless, relentlessness, persistence, never quit, never lost. To this day. Uh, but the quote really opened my eyes of how these quote unquote, and it, it'll be always the dudes that talk about alpha mentality and all this shit. And they'll use Michael Jordan as as an example. It's funny how people try to use Michael Jordan and try to say, that's why you should treat me and treat me with a home-cooked meal. My room be vacuumed four times a day. My laundry should be ironed, pressed, washed. It's like, but she's like, I have a job too. It's like, I don't give a fuck. I work more hours than you though. It's like, I don't give a fuck. I make more than you actually. It's like, do you not see my I'm an alpha t-shirt? Bitch, do my fucking dishes. Uh, that's how a lot of these dudes think. These are the same dudes that will read a quote like that and get this misnomer mindset and think like, I need to be like Mike. The problem is, you're not. We, we, we get, you know, obviously, you get into the money, popularity, all that shit. You know why you're not? Because you're just not, man. And that's okay. I'm not a dude like act your wage, act your, you know, act your uh, place. And like, I'm not, I, I'm very against all that. But you can't take extreme Michael Jordan type of things that he can say and get away with and think, I'm just going to do that. Imagine going to your job, quote unquote, applying the Bamba mentality. You would get fired in like two days because. They'd be like, you're fucking insane. You're actually a distraction. You're actually, it's very toxic for this. Those mindsets only work for very high-strung, highly competitive, real situations. Sometimes people take that shit too literal, though. And that's kind of the problem with this quote, because now there's going to be a 12-year-old that reads that comment. I never lost. I just ran out of time. It's like, well, your lost column says you lost. The UFC fighter... Gets knocked down the first round. Hey, you lost. It's like, I didn't lose. They just didn't let me get back up and recover for 12 minutes as I was concussed and completely blacked out. It's like, but that's not the rules. I'm not a guy that goes by the rules. It's like, well, regardless if you do or not, the thing you signed up for to get paid for, we do. Rules are in place for a reason. And of course... An exception of a person makes a statement and all of us that are applied to the rules always think we're the exception. Hmm. Crazy. And part of uh, part of the fascination with Michael Jordan, in my opinion, is really that I don't think he's real. I think really a lot of the persona, which I don't think this is breaking news. I think, I think a lot of this persona, like you, you listen to his coaches from college, high school. They're like, yeah, he wasn't really, he wasn't really this persona that he sees now. Like he was pretty, he was pretty 
low key. He worked, but he didn't have this. He didn't have this legendary work ethic that he developed in the NBA. <coughs> but he yeah, obviously like yeah, he was good. He had talent. He was the number three pick in the draft. This wasn't just some dude like in who was drafted where Rudy Gobert in the second round. It was like hey, holy shit, like this. This wasn't like a Giannis situation where a dude's drafted 15. Like, ah, oh, we'll see. You know, it's like, he was drafted number three overall. Like, the dude obviously was fucking good, right? Now, something switched when he got to the NBA. But, of course, quotes like this. You're going to have dudes out here making quotes and be like, I have a picture of Michael Jordan with the six rings on his fingers. And... You know, in some like Steve Jobs outfit while his hands are hovered over while the chair is turned on top of the back of the chair. And then the title is going to be like built different. And they're going to caption me as well. And I'm sorry to break it to you. You're not. Um, not trying to be a dick here, but if you're making time to post that you're built different, people that are built different, don't spend time posting. They're built different. They just do it and they live it. Um, so yeah, but all I'm going to say is imagine LeBron saying that quote and how different it's interpreted and people will when he accomplishes what it's like it doesn't matter because the point is the mentality is what got him those accomplishments right so if you got to have that mindset before you have any accomplishments then you're gonna be having a bunch of dudes out here a bunch of people that haven't done whatever they destined to do saying shit that they have no business saying I'm destined to do my problem with the quote is that it creates simps for Michael Jordan. The same dudes that are going home, or the same dudes who, not going home to a girl, the same dudes that wear, I'm an alpha, I'm in this shirt, I'm a red pill, dude. It's like, dude, if, if you're quoting Michael Jordan references as your main thing of, it's like, bro, stuff that applies on a basketball court, doesn't always translate to the ladies in some aspects or really just in life. Sometimes you got to translate it through a filter for it to apply. You can't just lift it like a baby out of the crib into another. And it's the same thing. It's just not. I never lost the game. I just ran out of time. Imagine if your wife said to you or your girlfriend. You know, she's spending the night, you know, and her little booty shorts are yours. She's wearing your nice little hoodie. And she's cook and you know, she's cooking a little something. She accidentally burns the food, right? And you're wondering, I can't eat this burnt food. What the fuck? You fucked my skillet. You fucked my breakfast. She's like, Well, sorry, I have to go to work. So uh you know, your unemployment check will be in the mail. I'm sure it'll be here in a few days and we could get ahead of some things. But I gotta go to work. Since, you know, I'm carrying your fucking ass right now and I still made time to cook you something. And all the food is dropped. You're too lazy to cook and you tell like, no, you're not going to work until you make me my fucking breakfast. And she looks in the fridge and be like, well, that was all of it. You have to go to the grocery store. And these dudes like, bitch, do you not remember I'm built different? <laughs> do you not remember I quoted Michael Jordan on my Facebook page two days ago? Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? And she's like, oh, Jesus. Well, when you put it like that, I mean, you know. And crazy these dudes that have a mentality that's unwarranted. But... You know, they call themselves the alpha underdogs. And I say, well, my, my thing about this alpha and red pill shit in general is that if you have to always tell people you are something, maybe you don't really believe you are. You know, they typically say the more you tell someone who you are, 
that's the less of who you are. Like, people want to learn about you through your actions, how you actually deal with shit. Not because I tell you, like, oh, I'm really great at this. I'm really good. Oh, I play this. I play that. Actually, I do this. And it's like, all right. And they hang out with you, and then they hear you sing, and they're like, you, 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 you can't play guitar. You said that you were John Mayer-esque. And you're like, well, you know, I, I, I you know, I, I watched a hour and 10 minute open speech Berkeley, uh, you know, TED talk he did. It's like, okay, but that doesn't make you John Mayer. It's, it's like, yeah, but he said, you just gotta trust the process. It's like, okay, what process should I trust in this? It's like, bitch, just make me my fucking breakfast. Stop asking questions. Um, and that's the type of way these dudes act. That's the type of way a lot of... Obviously, I'm generalizing a stereotype that you would see on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. Obviously, most dudes aren't really like that. But there are the few that stick out. And that's the ones that get stuck out when you have people... When, when you have girls that make fun of these dudes and make these parody video compilation of impersonating because it is true. And we can make impersonation compilation videos of women who talk about the same thing on that extreme, you know, um, uh, it, it can kind of work both ways. Actually, I was, uh, I was watching a video. I actually came across. I, I actually enjoyed the video. I forgot her. Uh, shit. I forgot her name. It's the only video I've seen from her, but I actually subscribed to the channel cause I liked it. And, uh, shit. What's her name? It, uh, it's not just something. I don't know. She has over a million subscribers, but anyways, it was this girl, you know, she's, you know, I don't know, pretty normal, I don't know, it's like, if you say normal girl, because I'm not, I don't know what classifies as normal, she she just looked like a normal girl, kind of punk rockish, like, she she looked like she was, you could definitely tell she was in the all-time low type of things in the mid-2000s, she looked around my age, maybe a little bit older, sexy voice, but yeah, she, uh, she, the title of it, I clicked it. She got me with the title. And it wasn't as direct, but it was so kind in the Genesis. It said, this is why most men, this is why, not, this is why men, or this is what happens, oh, let me rephrase. This is why men shouldn't have podcasts. And I clicked on a video as a man with a podcast, and my first instinct was, fuck this bitch. I'll be honest with you. Like, how dare you? It's like, well, as with most things, uh, men predominantly started podcasts, but not even going there Uh, because, you know, that's always the argument when when it becomes men, men created everything. And obviously that's not completely true. But as there's this one uh, thing on Bill Burr's Monday morning podcast, him and Nia, if you guys ever want to go check that out, they, they, they have, they did this thing. It was like, he was going on about, you know what, men invented a lot of shit, and I'm not, because he was referring to some woman saying men, he got an email like, men actually haven't created a whole lot, he's like, oh really? So he pulled up the female inventors list, he's like, oh look, a whole nine list, a whole list of nine women, you know how many things have been invented in the world? And he's like, last time I checked, there's two genders, well, nowadays you never know, but he's like, oh look, you built, oh look, you built you built a sewing machine. How outdated is that? Oh, you built this. You built... And it was like a bunch of things that, you know, would be considered like, do we really need it type of thing? But it's none that serious. But of course, I clicked the video, mentioned that podcast. <coughs> but what she was, you know, what, what she went over in like the 20-minute video is basically like, it. you know, of course, she watches like, she picked this TikTok, this YouTuber, this... Like a combination of podcasts and commentary videos where it's just due to haven't really thought this shit out. They can't really speak in full sentences. They can't really speak without, you know, it becoming where it just feels like it, you're just listening to regurgitate information and you could just replace their face with the actual originator or leave at least one of the original voices of this alpha organized type of shit. Where it's just honestly like anything with alpha and simp in it. As someone that's about to use simp in the title for the first time. Limp simp of intimacy. I feel like it all applies. 
because uh, a lot of this information has just become regurgitated. The terms high value, the terms... Uh, see, I don't even... I, I went through a period of time where I didn't even watch it for like my personal because I don't really subscribe to that extreme type of mindset at all. My idea is think for yourself. And if you live life and think for yourself, sometimes you'll learn the hard way. And sometimes... I think the main thing in a lot of this, it's a lot of overthinking and dating in today's world, to be honest, on both sides. I think a lot of people are so worried about being perceived weak or vulnerable by the other side that they're just taking direct orders from people and thinking that's going to apply and you're going to make a natural connection. It's like, you know what? Have respect for yourself. Be genuine. Be honest in what you're looking for. And you know what? If you come across people that don't subscribe to that, you don't have to keep fucking them. You don't have to keep being around them. You don't have to call them your boyfriend. You don't have to call them your girlfriend. You can just not. You don't have to subscribe to a way of life that you don't approve to because it's quote unquote societally acceptable now. You don't. You really don't. A lot of this shit is really just overthinking for people to try to to try to make you subscribe to their quote unquote new world of ways or their more modern ways. So you know what? If you have a belief of what you want from someone, kind of go with that and put together of what are behaviors that you would enact to attract someone to have those qualities. But crazy thought. I know that actually takes, you know, you know, actual self-discovery, not just let me discover while 25 dudes enter inside my body. That's how I discover what I really want. It's like, eh, you know, may have four kids by then. But hey, uh, oh, you'll be discovering a lot of things. Alimony and stress <laughs> and weight gain. And whoo. But yeah, it's a... Uh, Anytime I never click on videos, I never, I never click on videos that have the words alpha simp and stuff because typically it's just dudes repeating the same thing that someone fresh and fit, the rational male, the you know these life male relationship expert, I quote unquote, uh, because you can't be a relationship expert in general because relationships are too subjective. Are there qualities that kind of Fester in the human behavior, typically with the gender, sure. But I'll put it like this. You can do the same exact thing. I'll put it like this as a guy. You can take two girls on the same dates, the same way. You could try to have the same topics of conversation. You could wear the same outfit, smell the same and everything. You got the same type of game. Same, you could plan the same night and replicate it. As much as you can identically. And you are probably going to get two completely opposite results. Or there's a good chance you are. One may, one may, you may hit it out of the park. It may be, holy shit, I want to be around this person for the next eight hours of my life. Another person, after 22 minutes to a date, you're like, fuck. I can't believe it's like I should just fucking get her Uber home and take the L on this one because she's definitely just here for free meal at TGI fucking Fridays. I know you're just here for the free apps. It's cool though. I'll pay for the apps, but get the fuck out. Uh, but yeah, TGI not at my Fridays. <laughs> but yeah, it it's just you, pe- people are taking these advices too direct. And they're not actually applying it to their genuine selves and how they actually apply it to make it realistic. Because people can sniff out phoniness from either sex. I can tell, like me personally, I can tell when a girl is trying so hard not to be hurt. And I think girls can really tell when a guy is trying so hard to not be viewed as quote unquote weak. Which you can honestly only be viewed as weak, in my opinion. Is if you're trying to protect something that no one's even tried to poke at yet. And it's just a high self-defense mechanism. But again, I'm not a relationship expert. By definition, if anyone's making money being a relationship expert, I just want you guys to know who buy it. That's your fault. 
how are you a you know Hitch is the greatest is it, you know it's not like you remember the movie Hitch with Will Smith well maybe he should have applied Hitch to his real life but neither here nor there oh we'll talk about seven pounds that's weighing inside of him uh, <laughs> but you notice how like he's you know he's teaching uh what, what was the what was Kevin James was it Marv or I forgot his name but basically Kevin James character he's teaching him you know, how to get better with girls, how to get the girl at once. He ends up getting this really hot model looking girl. And it makes no sense based off their appearance, you would think. And though basically the whole moral is he's teaching them how they get her and all this stuff, how they get all these girls. And yet, to get this really hot, attractive fucking model looking girl, she only liked him when he was actually confident in being himself, right? But Hitch is telling them, be everything but yourself. And remember that scene where he slaps in the face, stop. Don't ever do that. And guess what? He essentially does that, and that's how he gets the girl. And he teaches Hitch that, hey, all this cool, like, get the girl, like, there's things where it works. It gets you in the door, but it's probably not going to keep you in there for a long period of time. And if that's not what you look for, that's cool. But when you hear these dudes bitching about, a woman ain't this, and it's because they don't value this. And you know what? If you keep on seeking women in those fields, if you keep on inviting nine women on your podcast who are just like complete whores because they're in Miami, you literally flew them out because without your podcast and platform, most of these girls would not give two fucks about you. Like, if you ever heard Prince off Fresh, <laughs> I was about Fresh Prince, Will Smith, Fresh and Fit Prince CEO, oh shit. Uh, but yeah, like there's nothing when you hear fresh talk, right? On fresh and fit, this is literally how he talks. It's like anytime he enter Myron basically does all the talking. The one is called fit. Anyone knows this. I don't really want to talk about fresh and fit, but they kind of applauded this because they kind of, they just regurgitate the same eight things in their whole podcast, whatever. And you hear fresh talk is just like, but see, he's, he's high value. And that's why high value men, they, you, they, they can cheat and they, they can cheat and you, you just can't. <laughs> that's his explanation. No, no, like, you know, deeper philosophical. He doesn't reference any like deep. He doesn't even reference like a bullshit passage in some, uh, you know, archaic philosophy type of live how to really live your life to maximum potential book and how to truly be a leader like nah he didn't even try he's just like he just says the same keywords over and over and Myron does a little bit better job of at least trying to bullshit you to a different extent but it's just basically the same nine things said in their podcast over and over and they bring essentially let's just call it what it is they bring very low intelligent dumb bitches on their podcast most of the time um i know that sounds worse than it really is but look they go on there dress a certain way because they're there for a certain reason they're in town for a certain reason and i know they're just there to live their best life but they're there to live their best life for a parade. And they've promoted the Blue Jasmines, the Brittany Renners of the world. And ironically, I believe the platform of their, the basis of their platform originally was well-intentioned. It was literally to expose a lot of the bullshit that's happened in modern society that's being accepted, that's being just persistent throughout a lot of this shit. And now... I think it's like, all right, you've already proved that point, but now you're just kind of promoting this behavior where all you're doing is promoting the younger girls who are 17, 18, 19, 20, that, hey, there's a lot of rewards if you do this shit, and we're going to promote it like, oh, you're telling me this shit is bad, but then you bring the Blue Jasmine's and Brittany Renner's who, Blue Jasmine on a more serious, like, she basically, I'm out here finessing, Brittany Renner at least tries to kind of like be a little maniacal with it sometimes, like, what, you think of this is why I wanted? Which, yeah, probably kind of a little. But I think Blue Jasmine is the bigger example. Some girls are like, yeah, that's just, this is what I do. And ever since her clip went viral on one podcast, she's been on Fresh and Fit. She's been on other bigger channels in the Manosphere, quote, unquote. And all these dudes, they bring these girls on the show, just the same girls they bitch about and tell them 
No guy's going to want to be with you. High value men don't aren't going to want to do anything but fuck you. High value men aren't going to want to marry a girl like you and settle down because you're not submissive. And guess what they do? They do it exactly. And they just fuck them bitches. And I say that respectfully. Because I don't, it's, it's, it's like, you see what's happening, right? And that's why I don't take these dudes serious. Because they don't even pretend to try. And I'm not saying you got to always follow your way of living and everything you preach. But God damn it. At least, like, try to mostly give half a shit if you were going to subscribe the way you're teaching, right? It's like a, it's like a, it's, it's like R. Kelly town. It's like R. Kelly out here trying to. If he were to come out here and be like, hey guys, you know, let, let's protect our young woman out here. It's like, all right, man, let's uh, let's read the room a little bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, uh, it's just the same regurgitated information and to tie it kind of all a little bit back to Michael Jordan, it's, it, it creates this, uh, it creates this cartoonish type of rationalization it creates this cartoonish type of uh backing of what what's the word what's the terms i'm trying to use here it it kind of creates this cartoonish you can even say kind of like in politics where it's this un unconditional i'm gonna back you no matter what just because i subscribe to what your quote unquote lineage of thinking says it just basically creates dudes that ironically can't think for themselves. And they just subscribe to this because they take stuff too personal in their own lives and say, oh, well, this is why I suck. It's like, no, you just kind of suck. Um, you also, if you were going to be this type of mentality and you want to be in this all submissive culture, which is fine, if you actually have something to submit to, just saying you're this because you're a dude, no girl's going to actually look at you and be like, hey, yeah, I'll submit to a guy who has a credit score of 300 and can't even afford to upgrade his Google Chrome. No, <laughs> no, but like, seriously, there's got to be something there to legitimately submit to. And there's a lot of dudes that don't want to improve qualities. And it's not even about money. It's not about behavior. It's not really even about the things you probably think it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I have my like type of thoughts about. But you got to actually, they got to be able to look at you and be like, I actually feel genuine in what I'm submitting to. And submitting isn't always in the sense of quote unquote. I, I think when people view submitting from a woman's standpoint, it's always viewed as this I'm bowing down and just it means I'm literally just sucking your dick at all times, literally and figuratively. That's not really what the direct translation of submitting your life to someone. It's about really and this really comes from as a dude, you gotta understand that when a woman submits their life to you. Their life and their future is in your hands. And you need to take a lot more pride in that when a woman submits to you. When you ask a woman to marry you, not to get too real here. When you ask a woman to marry you, you're asking someone. And you are making a promise to someone. I am going to take care of you. When you say I do through thickness and uh, through thickness. Oh, let's hope you get real thick. Whew. Oh, please through thickness and health. Uh, basically, through thick and thin, whether you're thick or thin, I'm going to love the shit out of you. And it's not even about love. It's I am going to take care of you and protect you and honor you in a lot of ways. Not get too fucking cheesy here, but, you know, I guess I'm lifting the gown up and getting myself vulnerable. Not le- but when you ask someone to marry you, it's not, uh, it's too much of a direct translation of, hey, Where's my dinner, bitch? It's more of, have you said her? Have you done things to make her not have to worry about dinner being ready at 7 or 8 o'clock? Have you set up an environment where there's no excuse to actually not have things ready, right? Like, if you want, like if you want a stay-at-home wife, quote-unquote, the point of a stay-at-home wife is really to take care of your kids. 
like to me it is kind of wild like i don't know why you would want your wife me personally that's just my why would you want your wife just being home watching tv doing nothing all day if you don't have any kids and she's just at home watching tv and shit the only reason why you want that is not because you just want to relax and sell. It's because you you just kind of don't want her to do anything. If you have the whole point of being a housewife is simply because you have kids that take care of kids. Kids is a job. You bring home the money. You take care of the family household, and there's simply a division of labor to make sure things are running smoothly. But sometimes I think dudes literally take this direct translation that. If I just make money, that's all I have to do. That's the definition of providing. And although that is probably the biggest form of providing, it is not the only form of providing. Because you don't need to bring home $3,000 a week to be a good father or to be a good husband or to contribute to the household. That's not directly what's just going to make someone respect and love you. If it's a woman that you quote unquote say you want, that submits to you. There's a lot of things that factor in this shit. That typically when you have younger immature dudes. Who have been just hurt and hurt and hurt. It, you know you, you really seek it. And they seek. And you have dudes that are seeking these channels. To seek desperation in their lives. In my opinion. That doesn't mean they don't have value. I'm not saying these channels don't have value. I'm not saying these avenues don't have legitimate real information that's real because you want you should be more mindful of how you are perceived by the opposite sex but if your whole obsession with every move you make is just to not be viewed as weak or to not be viewed as a certain way then you're more worried about optics and semantics and pr in the sense of real life than what actually is and if you're so worried about how you appear, do things to make yourself just naturally appear better. To me, a lot of this shit is this overcorrection. Like anything, it becomes overcorrection. When women say men ain't shit, no, it's it's the few men that really ain't shit. And then there's a, a lot of just confused men that don't know what to do. Then you have the few that actually are confident in, in themselves. And... You know, most most people are like in between where they're just confused. They don't know. Like they're so worried about what does opposite sex really want. And the irony about these alpha and all this shit is that the whole obsession. And I'm not saying being true alpha. I'm talking about the way these a lot of these manosphere. I think there are a few real ones like mediocre tutorial reviews. I believe it actually is a more genuine real version. Where the fresh and fit is more of this theatrical, commercial, not even commercial, but it's just theatrical, over the top, but I don't believe the messenger. That's more and more of the problem. If you're gonna if you're gonna preach this shit, I need to believe the messenger. And yes, your appearance and how you appear, how you look, how you talk, all that shit matters. If you have kind of a high voice and you're dressed a certain way and you're wearing certain things and you're talking about quote unquote how a man looks, I'm not going to really listen to you. I'm just going to be honest with you. And I'm not one of those people that goes around dress all great all the time. But I also understand that the way you appear does matter. Now, do you care about how you appear? Do you care about how you appear for someone's approval? That's an individual choice. Me personally, I'm not out here to dress to appear good for anyone. That's just me personally. Now, some people say, well, you know what? You actually try not to appear good so you don't have to... Appeal to pressure to what if you think you look good and no one's... So, it's like, actually, uh, I've had success putting very little effort. Maybe you should try, uh, ironically, a little less effort. It's a little too much. No one, no one likes someone that tries too hard. I don't care what sex you are. This, this has become the relationship advice pod for no... I, I'm not warranted to give any advice of any relations, of anything... I talked about Ukraine and Russia last pod, and I realized I was really fucking wrong in a lot because I, I really thought Russia was kicking Ukraine's ass when you found out 4,500 Russian troops or 4,500 plus Russian soldiers have died in Ukraine. Like, I, I shouldn't say only, but compared to 4,500, they've had like, I believe, 
a couple hundred, 300, 400 casualties. Which is because, well, as a friend, because I was, I talked to a friend a little bit earlier about today, a little sidetrack here, in that, uh, the, he's like, you gotta think about it. It's so much harder. It's, it's so much easier to be stationary and defend something and shoot from afar, even if you are smaller forces and everything, than it is attacking because you're more open and vulnerable to getting shot. Wow. I guess it's like dating, vulnerable to getting shot. Sometimes point blank, sometimes it's in the DMs. But yeah, you gotta. But he's explaining, like, yeah, like, they're fine. But the difference is Putin's just gonna keep sending them out there because he does not really give a fuck about civilians and people and shit. And no surprise. But yeah, uh, when it comes to. The irony is people that are converting, trying to be alphas and converting to alpha. That's not very alpha. You are, you are ironically kind of, you are being sent to an alpha mentality because you are letting a mentality control how you think more than actually what you really think. And when someone talks to you and then when you're 12 years from now, still bitching about woman and all this shit, guess what? You can't even like say there's something about me because you adopted a mentality that wasn't even yours. That you have that you weren't even really ready to fully engage in, not realizing that the mentality is something you naturally gain through just bettering yourself as a dude, as a guy, and not just trying to, oh, I'm gonna start doing this, I'm gonna start acting like this, this, and this, and I'm gonna get this. And that's not saying you can't find temporary success in that, but that's the key thing. It's just gonna be you're gonna get temporary type of shit, and maybe that's just what you want, and that's cool. But obviously, if you're seeking this type of, if you're seeking this type of desperation of type of advice or uh, type of information to better, there's obviously, you're not looking just for some temporary shit. There's obviously something in you that feels like you want something of meaning. No, but like you're definitely seeking something a little bit more than just, hey there, pretty girl. You know exactly what I wanted. It was kind of fun because now, like, uh, I, I think I saw, like, a YouTube as, like, a brief moment where it was, like, Rihanna, Drake, Drake simped for Rihanna, and that's why she chose ASAP Rocky. Like, it, it's funny how from afar, people just want to, we, we've become very casual of just simplifying you're this and you're this because of a couple characteristics instead of actually like, dude, I, I think the betrayal Drake leads on about how he is. Maybe it was like that time. Like you got to think that was 2010, 2011. And let's just say they couldn't make it work, 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 work. Oh, Jesus. But uh, I guess maybe, you know, maybe Rihanna chose ASAP Rocky because like she tried to tell Drake and foreshadowed him, foreshadowing him. I'm way too good for you. You took my love for granted. <coughs> but you know, it's uh, I don't. I I, per, I think Drake's a little bit more of a. I think he has a lot more cool, cool as these dudes want. Like I think he has a lot more alpha mentality than you like to think. You don't have the type of success in top chart and being cool, cool as they would call simps and shit. It's funny how, like, people, other dudes are so obsessed with how other guys treat their woman. And there's really, and I'm not for divorce laws, but in the Sam Hunt situation, by the way, that episode's still getting plays. Um, why would you, I kind of, I, I hate to, I got into a little comment situation. And someone said under the Sam Hunt divorce situation, and their their first worry about the whole situation, they ignore the fact that adultery, while she's pregnant with your child, he's like, I hope she doesn't get a dime of it, right? I hope she doesn't get a dime of his money. It's like, well, you could say that before they didn't have children. And even then, like, hey, man, like, they were together for a long time. There's a lot of shit she went through for him and all that shit. Well, she still decided to stay. It's like, all right, she also had a career before him type of shit. 
and I'm not again I'm not for divorce laws I think a lot of them there there should be common sense in each situation no one deserves two hundred thousand dollars a month like Dr. Dre's wife no one deserves that I don't care who you are I don't care how much money he makes there should be a top cap level that's kind of universal like all right here's the max in the highest case that someone gets if you can't find a way to live off this and thrive and whatever like you got you have other issues but someone's like, I hope she doesn't get a dime and I'm like well she's going to get a dime because she's literally delivering his child and honestly if you are if you have a child in this world as a father regardless if you're to get like you should want to provide for that child anyways regardless that's just I don't care what you say now there's fucked up situations where women try to hold the kid hostage away or like you know, I'm not I'm talking about normal situations where parents are like all right we'll we'll find a way to make this work even if we're not together we live apart like they see her and be like I hope she and she's like well you know what she it's like you know what she wanted a divorce she, what she can work and make money it's like well she's literally about to have a kid it's not like you have a kid and you just go to you just go back to work three weeks later. And the kid can't really stay with him because he's an artist whose job is literally the tour six months a year. He can't just have a baby on the road at two months old driving around in a fucking RV. Like, do you not know how the shit works? Do you not know the dynamics? And these are the type of dudes that they focus on the worst extreme cases. And obviously Sam Hunt probably has a lot of money. Not to make this a Sam Hunt divorce pod now. But... You know, he doesn't have Dr. Dre money or some shit. But it's like, honestly, I feel like the ease of him probably paying whatever month is probably going to be more easy going than actually trying to see her fight it personally. But that's not my business in that sense. But the fact that it's like, so you would just not want to pay for your child type of shit. He's like, but what has she done and all this shit? It's like, well, she actually used to be a nurse. And before they got back together, she didn't really want to be, but she's like, you know what? She submitted to him, took, and that's the part, when you ask someone to marry you, you're asking someone to submit their lifestyle, and if they're giving up dreams of their own, you're going to make sure to the very least provide, to at least try to make up for that, right? Provide and take their life in your hands, hoping that there's something bigger than that, right? Of course, people do don't really think about that. And I'm not here trying to just kind of hold men accountable. But I think the problem is when I see comments like this, it goes to show that a lot of people get into very serious situations like marriage without thinking the severity. And when people say, well, marriage shouldn't be a contract. You know what? I kind of agree. But it is. Regardless if you want it or not. And you voluntarily decide to make it a contract. You can't get married unless you wanted to get married. Even if I don't care when someone, she pressured me to marry. It's like, you know what? If you feel like someone's pressuring to marry you, and that's not a person you want to be with, then maybe you shouldn't marry that person. If you felt pressured, I think that view's on you. That's on you, man. But you know the ram. You know, in the contract, and I'm not for, again, I'm not for marriage being a contract. But to think, you know, it's funny is that dudes, when they're business experts, quote unquote, they want to put a contract on the smallest of things to make sure to protect their assets. So why would you not put a marriage contract to protect the assets of everyone involved? So with the thing that literally is your lifetime compared to some business venture that may last five years and you could pull out and just, you know, cash out or whatever. If you plan on marrying someone, having kids, your kids are covered, your wife, husband, you die, you have a will, and it's all protected because of this quote-unquote shitty contract, it's like a bank, as much as you want to bitch about it, you are protected if you make sure everything's set up the right way. It's funny how, like, the dudes, like, dudes want to have all the benefits, have a wife take all this shit, all that, then do a really bad thing to literally... 
breach of contract, which adultery is a breach of contract, and people want to talk about and be business expert. Well, when people breach their contract, you can find a ways out. When people don't act away or abide by the honor of their contract, they can get out of it. But it's funny how with marriage, we want to make those exceptions. Well, you know, we don't understand. I'm not saying it was right, but she still is like, you know what? When there's a kid involved, I honestly don't give a fuck about your feelings. And I'm not talking about him specifically, but when I hear people talk about this shit, it just further goes to show that there's a lot of people that should not be parents. There's a lot of people that shouldn't get married. And you know what? Maybe the bigger thing is maybe there should be some type of type of test you have to take before you get married. Maybe there should be actual requirements before you legally get married to someone. There's, maybe there should be people who should literally never be legally allowed to get married because of things about them. I'm not saying that should be a thing, but if we're going to go down that road, obviously a lot of people aren't taking this shit serious. People want to use marriage for all the benefits and all the social status and all that shit. But then when they fuck up and make bad decisions in their marriage and they hurt their partner or they do things that put their partner in a bad situation, they don't hold their word or honor. And then they fuck that up and somehow they become victim of a situation they created. It's the weirdest thing to me. People who scream the loudest about being victims... Not all the time, but in situations like this, it seems like lately in cases, there's a lot of people that scream the loudest about being victims of stuff. And then you look at the situation, it's like, but you're the origin of the creation of this. And, you know, it's not very alpha mentality. Oh, we got prote- it's like, you know what, if you were so worried about protecting all your shit, and all that's all you cared about was just yourself and protecting it. You have stayed single. You have not involved any other woman. You have not had children. If that was all you cared about. It's just wild to me. Because these messages we're sending through these uh, dudes who want to preach how much of a scam marriage is and all this shit. And look, there's flaws in everything. You can find the shitty things in all things. But don't 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 sit here and act like it is the worst thing ever happened to Earth. Because imagine we live in a world where your marriage and your kids are not protected by contracts. No, let's go down. Let's go down a little bit of this dark alley you want to go down on, huh? Let's say. Let's say you're not married or whatever. Now, there's common law shit, boy. Let's say you're together with someone for four years, right? You have kids, you have a house together, but you're not married. She's dedicated your life to you. You've dedicated your life to her. All this shit. And one of y'all, whether it's a husband, I don't even want to make it where it's specific, where it sounds like I'm showing. I'm just saying, let's just say the husband or the wife just walks out in the family. Let's just say that. Then what? Oh, hey, you didn't have a contract to prevent it. Well, hey. Uh, Actually, I don't even know that's a good example. Because you probably shouldn't have been married to begin with anyways. (laughs) I really thought I was doing something there. And I fucked up the, like, virtual, I guess, in this situation, punchline. Where it was like, I really thought I just gave, like, a silencing example in the auditorium. Where I was like, holy shit. This guy just blew my mind. And I just were like, I just need to blow my mind right now. <laughs> now literally, but you know. <clears throat> uh, but okay, let me give a better example. You Okay, well, yeah, let's say a situation where you're not married or anything, but you have you have a kid together. And let's just say he's a stepfather, right? He's not legally adopted. Stepfather, stepmother. They're not legally, they're not legally uh, adopted by them. You know, they don't have. Uh, they don't have technically any legal obligation to take care of them. But the child looks at them. That's the father. That's this, that, and the other. And he just walks out one day. She walks out. He walks out. Let's not make it specific. 
And then what? The, he disappeared. Let's say he disappears or whatever. They can't even take money out of his account for alimony. Even if they find him, he would not be legally obligated to pay anything for that child. Even though that child already looks him as a father or a mother. Because that's who they grew up and that's the figure. And we want to talk about protecting children all this shit. But it's a lot of adults looking out for self-interest when things don't work out. In situations that are most of the time self-inflicted. Not all the time. Most of the time situations that you hear people talk about are self-inflicted. This sex sucks. That sex sucks. Like this guy, this girl, they suck. It's like, alright, well. Maybe find someone with better qualities of what you're looking for. Not to be so simple here. But, you know. I don't know. It's a lot of people simping ironically to a mentality that it's not really like what when, when honestly it, it's just cringe in person to hear people call them I, I don't know if you've ever heard someone call themselves an alpha and you look at them and you're like are you a dude just starts being extra douchey to people for no reason Starts being, especially like they start texting certain way the girls that may be found attractive in text, but then in person, it looks really weird. It's like, no, I'm going to order your drink for you. It's like, all right. But, I don't know. And that is Limp Simp of Intimacy. Or Alpha Underdog. Underdog. All right. That's episode 119 of the Off and Beat Podcast. This will be out Thursday. Most importantly, suck some titties and enjoy your day. Oh, Jesus. Limp simp of intimacy. Child support sucks. Yeah, I would only assume. Uh, typically, it's not built for it not to suck. It's supposed to make you be like, hey...